treatise is running. New material doesn't mean we're like uh, abandoning Friday and moving on to something else. New material just means uh, the continuation of the story, of the concepts, uh, adding layers. Uh, you know, maybe when we were youngsters, our definition of baking was like the little easy bake oven kind of thing, right? And as you grow up, you're like, man, these pots and pans and ovens are useful when you can add to it. It's the same thing, but it's not really, right? It's more developed, more layers. And that's what this, this class is. So do we have any questions about any of the stuff last week before uh, we keep rolling along? Okay. We analyze movement joint by joint. So if that's true, which it is, it's important for us to be able to identify which joint is which joint, right? What is an ankle? What is a subtalar? What is a knee? What is a hip? Outside of traditional robot world movement, uh, not only does the real world not move in robot world, sport activity definitely doesn't. Has anybody seen last night? I think Simone Biles was doing all kinds of human, superhuman flips and stuff, right? She doesn't move like this. It's all combinational things. And all of that fancy movement, though, is in essence simplified by the fact that we analyze movements joint by joint. The wrist can only do so many things, the ankle can do so many things, the hip can only do so many things. It's, it's almost like seeing a picture on, on the internet and you zoom in and you see these little pixels, right? And you're like, how can that high resolution image in its foundation just be a bunch of little squares? Does that make sense? So it's similar. How can all this complex movement be a combination of simple individual joints? And that's what we're going to explore, OK? So today's lecture is going to focus on perspective to make sure that we understand why certain things we see certain ways might look different to observers, to different observers. but we actually may be seeing the same thing, okay? Perspective. All right. Ooh, I wish they stayed this small forever. This is my youngest. Uh, back when he smiled more, he's a, a teenager now. Um, and so, Perspective of movement. If Brian was rotating, it's a Scottish version of Brian because I didn't want a junior, but if Brian was swinging on the bar, he would be rotating in his sagittal plane. Let's assume this, this view was a little bit more rotated so if he was swinging like directly into you guys, right? That would be in your sagittal plane. Heck, that would be in the room sagittal plane, side to side, all good. But if I was spotting Brian or watching him as a, as a father who wants to make sure you know, he doesn't fall and hurt himself, you know, I might see Brian from the side, and that is my frontal plane. Well, who's right? Well, both of us are correct as long as we communicate who's seen what. It's not a problem. The class is sagittal, brain sagittal, my frontal. Notice I didn't just say frontal or sagittal, I communicated who's seen what, and that's okay. A question that was brought up on Friday, I thought of a, of a, of a better answer. You know, sometimes after an argument, you go back and say, gosh, I should have said this. It wasn't an argument, but sometimes I think of analogies that could work and try, I try to remember them. If you think about it, it doesn't matter if Brian's feet are swinging to you or away from you, the rotation is still sagittal plane. It doesn't matter the clockwise or the counterclockwise. It doesn't matter if I do a front roll or a back roll, it's still the same 
dimension of spin. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter that his feet go forward or his feet go back. The plane of spin is still the same. The axis about which the rotation occurred is still the same. Dr. Campbell, how do we, what is there has to be a difference. Feet go forward, feet go back. How can it be the same? It's the same plane and it's about the same axes, but the rotation isn't the same clockwise, counterclockwise. Interstate 10 is the same road, but going east or west down that road is different. So for us, our clockwise, counterclockwise differences in the same plane is going to be our flexions and our extensions and our abductions and our adductions and our internal and our external rotations. But those different spins are happening in the same rotational dimension. Make sense? So if you had a bicycle and you rolled forward or you rolled back, same dimension of spin, the different directions of spin, that's what we call clockwise, counterclockwise. Okay. So perspective. We have, just like in, who's taken exercise physiology before, okay? You guys learned about like um, absolute VO2 and relative VO2, and for those of you that haven't taken, I'm sure you've heard about that, or uh, where you have like a total number and then you have a number relative to your body weight. It's relative to you. It's how, it's how does this number affect you? Um, you don't have to take exercise phys physiology to understand that boxing and MMA, they fight relative to their body weight. So you don't have a, you know, a, a 250 pound boxer boxing a 150 pound box. It's relative to their size. Similar, we have a global or absolute reference. It's the same for all observers. North is north for all observers. What I mean by that is it doesn't matter if I'm facing this way, point north to my left. But if I'm facing the other way, point north to my right. I it's the same for all observers. In sixth grade, I, I remember this story. I, I felt so bad for my friend. My, our sixth grade geography teacher asked my friend Kevin to stand up and he said, point north, and Kevin did this. And everybody smirked. And I was like, well, that's logical because on the board, that's how you do north, south, east, and west. Right? Like, north, south, east, and west. So we have to remember that sometimes these things we see that are normal or look easy sometimes come with, with kind of these allusions to it. You know, north is not straight up, but we can't draw it on the chalkboard like, <laughs> like this, right? Kind of goes back to our planes and axes. So perspective matters. A global or absolute reference is a fixed reference that doesn't change even though you may change in the room. What's that? He said fixed reference oh, Thank you for getting me back on track. I appreciate that. Okay. So global references are fixed. So the first reference that I gave you for the classroom, the classroom sides, they're not going to change even though I may move around them. The front and the back of class isn't gonna change, even though I may change around them. The top and the bottom of class isn't gonna change, even though I may change around them. So an absolute or global reference is something we can all observe relative to our environment, our class, our stage. It doesn't change. So on the test, because that's what really matters, how are you going to ask this on the test? On the test, I might say, um, what plane does this pole rotate in globally? And if I say global or absolute, right away you should say, 
okay, that's the room's perspective, not necessarily what Campbell's looking at or I'm looking at. Because you may be on the side of class viewing here, and you may be in the front of class viewing here. You may see two different spins from your perspective. But from the classroom's perspective, this would be sagittal. Does that make sense? From a global reference, a global fix. And it makes sense that the classroom has everything we need to understand a fixed reference. Up, down, front, back, side, side. So far, so bad. In anatomical position, I'm going to jump ahead. have heard of anatomical position before and what I'm hoping is my class will make it make more sense anatomical position is a universal starting point for all of our different joints so that way when we're trying to give directions and someone says I'm at the tailgate come meet us and they say, well, I need some help. I've never been there before. How do I get to you? What's the first thing you're going to ask them? Where are you at? Where are you at? How am I going to describe how to move to get to me unless I know where are you at? Things have to be referenced to each other. North isn't always north. North of Lafayette is something different than north of New Iberia. All right? You could have some place, New Iberia could be north of Grand Isle, but it could be south of Lafayette. You, you have to have reference here in order for any of these directional things to make sense. So that's why we have anatomical position. It's, it's, a, it's a fixed point that now we can have reference to things. North can mean something. South can mean something. Flexed can mean something. Extended can mean something. Make sense? Now, true anatomical position. You know it. However, what I wanted to add to the context is true anatomical position has all of our perspective seeing the same planes and axes, whether that's here or here. Meaning, my eyes see the room sagittal. Front to back to the classroom is front to back to my head, front to back to my shoulder, front to back to my hip, front to back to my belly button, front to back to my knee, anterior posterior, anterior posterior, anterior posterior, does that make sense? Okay. Bilateral, all checks out. Both sides, right side, left side, right side of class, left side of class. Right ear, left ear, side, side, all works out. However, the perspectives can change once I move about the classroom. It's that simple. So what I mean by that is this will always be the front and the back of class, but this will always be the front and the back of my head. So if I move my head, I now move the front to the back, the anterior to posterior of my head. My anterior posterior to my shoulder is now the room side to side. And that's okay as long as I communicate the perspective. And let me give you a so what. I think I said this on Friday, but I like to teach with repetition. The so what is so that you guys will understand why these motions from the elbow 
are the same regardless of if they happen here or if they happen here or if they happen here or if they happen here. In other words, it doesn't matter that those motions were in different planes of the room. What's important were that they were in the same plane of the joint. And that's why this will be flexion and extension here, flexion and extension here, flexion and extension here. Because from my elbow's perspective, the elbow's like, I'm doing the same thing I was doing when I was in Anthem. A car, hopefully everyone is safe, but a car's wheels traveling in its sagittal plane is still traveling in its sagittal plane if it flips over and it's spinning like this, even though it might be in the room's transverse or the world's transverse, that wheel is still spinning the same for the car. We're good? Okay. So football season's coming up. So I'm going to give an analogy, but it could be applied to tennis, basketball, volleyball, softball, baseball. And that is there's a lot of different perspectives when you're watching a game. You have the armchair quarterback perspective, right? The fans who, you shouldn't have done this. Why would you do this? They're so judging. I'm one of those fans when it comes to the Saints. So you have the perspective of the people on the field. Nah, the field, on, in the stands. I mentioned this on Friday, like the people viewing the game, the field doesn't change for them. And that's whether or not you're seeing the whole field or if you're in the end zone, the game doesn't change from your seat. You'd have to get up and move. The coach has a different view of the game because the coach is trying to manage different players and different strategies. And the coach is kind of like your eyes and your brain trying to process all the stuff that's happening with all these different players who are all working towards the same goals. And then you have the individual players. They all have a perspective of the game. I was a former wide receiver. I know how wide receivers think. Coach, I'm open. Brian, you're not open. Coach, I'm telling you, I'm open, right? We're always open. <clears throat> Players have perspectives. So bringing that back to the human body. A global reference is kind of like the fans watching the game from the stands. A local or relative perspective could be our coach watching with our brain and our eyes of planes and axes, because that's how you see things. I see sagittal. Okay? And then the player's perspective, that is what our joints are. Elbow, wrist, shoulder, because those are the players running the play and doing all the things for function while the coach is sending the signals to call the plays. Yeah? And sometimes, guys, we're gonna, we are in allied health professions. Sometimes the helmet tech goes out and you can't hear the plays being called. And sometimes that happens in our bodies, whether it's injury or paralysis where signals aren't being sent and you can't communicate and there's miscommunications. And even without those things, there's miscommunications. When you're tired, there's miscommunications. When you're fatigued, there's miscommunications. Cramps, miscommunications from being tired. A lot of torn ligaments happen when you're tired and there's miscommunications between the brain and muscles being influenced, okay? So, what our eyes see is a type of perspective. And I'm gonna communicate on the test by what did you see? How did you see it? Did you see sagittal, frontal, or transverse? You guys see frontal. You see frontal. You guys see sagittal. Both of you are correct. What do you guys see? 
frontal. You know what we can all see? Let's see if I can do this right. My sister was a baton twirler, but I'm not so much. I'm not going to even try. We all see transverse. That's okay. We might see all this, the same thing. We might not, as long as we communicate. So what you see is literally how do your eyes process the planes and the axes. So if I did something like this, I see sagittal, you guys see sagittal. But what if I turn my head this way? What do I literally see? I see frontal. Does that make sense? I see frontal. You guys still see sagittal, that's okay. We analyze motion joint by joint. It's always gonna be the joint's perspective and the joints have a perspective of motion. Think of it like this, the joints, there was this movie like way back in the day, I'm old, it's called The Hills Have Eyes. Anybody ever heard of that movie? I've never seen it, I just heard of it. Well, all of you, oh my gosh, Campbell, why don't you try? All of your joints have a perspective. They all have like eyes set. Because think about it, this is the front of my wrist, anterior, posterior, front of my eyes, in the front, front of my elbow, in the front, front of my shoulder, in the front, front of my belly, in the front, front of my knee, in the front. So every joint has their own little eyes perspective. <laughs> so from my wrist perspective, this is sagittal plane rotation. Even though I turn my head and I see frontal, this wrist still sees sagittal. And even though I turn my wrist this way, I see my wrist moving frontal, but my wrist still sees it moving sagittal because its perspective moves with it. That's why it's local. That's why it's relative to the joint. The eyes move with it. This is still the wrist sagittal plane. Let me tell you how I can prove that. True anatomical, everybody's seeing the same thing. Let me get in front of the video camera in case y'all need to watch it again. I think this is gonna really seal it. Anatomical position, true anatomical, everybody sees the same. Front, back, left, right, up, down. Good? Front to back. Front to back, right? Front to back. This is the front of my wrist. The anterior posterior axis goes front to back. Frontal plane rotation. The bilateral axis goes side to side. Guess what? This is still the side to side of my wrist. This is still the side to side of my wrist. This is still the front to back of my wrist. This is still the front to the back of my wrist. This is still the front to back of my wrist. It doesn't matter, like The Rock used to say when he was in the wrestling. It doesn't matter. This is still anterior posterior to my wrist. It may not be anterior posterior to my sight. It may not be anterior posterior to the class. That's okay. We analyze motion joint by joint. This is about what the wrist sees. This is the player that's going to be involved in the play. I want to analyze them. Where are my football coaches at? Players, coaches, future coaches. I, get, I fall for it all the time. I just watch the football. But coaches watch the linemen and they see where the blocks are missed and they're watching other things that aren't falling for average people like me's attention. And you could play that analogy in softball, volleyball, any sport you want. You know the average fan is just following the ball. But the true, the true action is happening behind the scenes. Yeah? Yeah, it can be because what through the ball is going to be local because we're going to analyze the motion of the joints. But once the ball leaves my hand, I can't mess with it anymore. Have you ever seen, what's your favorite sport? Football. Outstanding. I'm trying to think of a football analogy. So if when I get to it, but I, I'm going to use a couple that I know people have used. And then, oh, I know, I got one, kicker. 
kicking a field goal. Bang! The ball's in the air. All right, they, they somehow think that like they're gonna be able to like use the force on the ball or or by leaning or by in baseball we do this all the time for a foul ball. We're like, no, stay fair, stay fair, as if the ball is gonna be like, wait, what? Where? Oh that okay. Basketball we do this all the time. We'll shoot and it'll be like, because uh, it might be drifting a little bit. Once that ball leaves our hand, we're done. We can't influence it. So for your question is following a ball, if it's left our our body, absolutely. Global reference. Everybody's seeing the same thing. Or we could say local reference. If you see the ball spinning here to there, you might see this spin or that spin. That's going to be a different spin than what they see. So it still comes down to communication. If you want to talk about the ball globally, no problem. It's going from this side of class to that side of class. It's spinning in a frontal plane globally. But then we could say, well, what does this side of the class see? What does this side of the class see? What do you see? What do you see? Here's the important part of today's lecture. Can you see why the front of my wrist stays the front of my wrist no matter what position I put it in relative to the room? That is important. Can you see why the sides of my wrist stay the sides of my wrist no matter how I put it relative to the room? That's important. And that's going to help us to explain and understand why wrist flexion and extension. Remember how I like to give questions for people that come to class? On the test, I'm going to say, what is the position of my wrist during a push-up? It would be something like this. Okay? I may do the go down, I may do the come up, but it's going to be, what's the position during a push-up? And a lot of students are going to say flexed. Now again, I'm going to teach you this. I'm, I'm giving you a heads up of what's coming. And I'm going to say, maybe we're going over the test, and I'm curious. I'm like, why would you say flex? And the students are going to say, well, I was taught that flexion is when your fingers go forward. And I'm going to say, well, if we're in anatomical positions and my fingers go forward and then I try to get on the ground, that's going to be a tough push-up on the back of my hands. Right? So what I'm trying to teach you guys is that global reference doesn't matter to joint motion. It's local reference. And if I'm doing a push-up here, and I say, all right, we analyze motion joint by joint. I want to check out my wrist. My wrist have nothing to do with my legs. My wrist has nothing to do with my trunk. My wrist has nothing to do with my radial ulna joint. My wrist has nothing to do with my shoulder. Hey, wrist, go back home to anatomical. Sure, let me just flex to go back home to anatomical. That meant I was in an extended position. I was extended, and then I did some other joint motions to put myself in a position to do the push-up. I'm going to teach you this. I'm just giving you examples of why these concepts are ultra important. Yes, ma'am. What a great question. I'm always going to clarify perspective unless a couple things. When I don't have to clarify, that means it's irrelevant, meaning everybody sees the same thing. Okay. So in other words, if I am um, here and I say um, from what plane would the students in the front of class see if I do this? Then global, local is all the same, right? 
if there's any variability on that then one hundred percent i'll i'll communicate if all i do is leave it with the joint that is from the joints perspective but if i say how would the elbow be rotating from a global reference then yes the elbow is rotating but i asked you to answer it from a room's perspective does that make sense absolutely because that's what we would all see from the elbows perspective it'd be sasha absolutely but you see how you get to two different answers because of two different questions so a lot of times people will i feel unfairly label my exams as tricky tricky is a function of your understanding of the material the German language, super tricky for me, because I don't speak German. If I did, it wouldn't be tricky. So trickiness is a function of your understanding, and ways that I help your understanding is, guys, before we get started, are there any questions? At the end of class, are there any questions? Asking great questions during class. Rewatching lectures that I've been posting on the old Moodler, coming in to my office hours, not the day before an exam to go over concepts, that's gonna make things not tricky. If my exams were tricky, nobody would ever make 100. I mean, think about it, because it would be luck. But every semester I have somebody make 100. Because they understand it. Cool? All right, let's keep pushing. Push, push, push. Oh, look, QR codes. Y'all, has anybody tried the QR codes yet? Have they worked? Because I don't, I know two things about QR codes. Nothing and more nothing. But the students that are helping me with this project are posting them, so I'm hoping that it's working. All right. Guys, you have heard of anatomical position. Anatomical position, anatomical position, anatomical position. <coughs> But there is another position that is of super importance to understanding human movement, and that's fetal position. You've, you've heard of fetal position. But what I don't think is you've ever had somebody yet say that fetal position is on the same level as anatomical position. What is the most common joint motion? Layman's, guys, I'm not. Like, this is a jeopardy. What do you think is the most common joint motion? I don't want to sit over there, then the video can't see me. What is the most common joint motion in the body? Meaning, like, what do we seem to have a lot of? Flexions. Absolutely, flexions and extensions. And if you're like me, you're like, when I was your age, I think, why? Why doesn't everything have a unique name? Why does my knee flex and my hip flex and my trunk flex and my cervical flex and my wrist, elbow, shoulder, a lot of things flex. And that is because anatomical position is like Lafayette, a universal point about which we can make reference to things north, south, east, west. Fetal position is another global landmark. And the pathway, the road to Lafayette, where's my, 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 my students from Natchitoches? I'm gonna use Natchitoches today. The pathway, and don't be like, mm, technically it's Northwest, all right? Uh, the pathway to Lafayette to Natchitoches, if Lafayette's anatomical and Natchitoches is fetal, the pathway to there is north. You've got to go north to get there, and you've got to go south to get back. So having a second universal reference point gives us context to joint motions. The pathway, stay, good. The pathway from anatomical to fetal position is flexion. Flexion is the direction of motion you travel to get to the field. Doesn't that just seem 
more comfortable than dealing with angles? Because you know the problem with angles? I've used my wrist as an example. Well, flexion is a decrease of an angle. Well, guess what? If I decrease this one, I increase that one. Well, we'll make it simple. Flexion is a decrease of an anterior angle. Oh yeah, explain that to the knee. Any rule you give me, I can give you an exception. But there's no exception to this rule. Flexion gets you into fetal. And now it doesn't matter if it's from the front or the back. It gets you to a new place, a new position. And you travel down the sagittal road in the flexion direction. Ooh, I didn't mean for that to rhyme so cleanly. Flexion direction, that sounds like a cool name for like a middle-aged man band who study kinesiology. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to first ever show of flexion direction. That was so stupid. Flexion gets you in the fetal. So if flexion gets you in the fetal, what do you think is going to get us out of fetal? Absolutely. Flexion gets you in the fetal. Take a rope, string, finger flexion. Ah, uh, we could go more. Not going to be on the test, but um, interphalangeal, distal interphalangeal, proximal interphalangeal, metacarpal phalangeal, wrist flexion. So, finger flexion, wrist flexion, elbow flexion, shoulder flexion. Cervical flexion, trunk flexion, hip flexion, knee flexion, dorsi flexion. I'm going to teach you when we go over the ankle, there's two different forms of getting in a fetal. When your feet are on the ground and then when you're on your bed sleeping, when your feet are off the ground. When gymnasts are spinning, they're not dorsi flex, they're plantar flex. Because getting into a ball off of the ground is different than getting into a ball when you're on the ground. Guys, I'm going to explain all that. Why do we have two different kinds of flexion at the ankle? There's always flexion extension, but at the ankle there's dorsi and plantar. I just explained it to you. There's always a reason for things. I think that's cool. And I think that also helps you remember. Here's where things can get a little tricky. But it's not tricky if you understand. Flexion gets you in the fetal, true. But each individual player on the team has no clue what all the other players are doing. Like my mom used to say when I'd try to tattle on my older brother and sister, don't worry about your, what your brother and sister's doing. Worry about you. So what I mean by that is flexion gets you in the fetal when you're in anatomical and everybody's seeing the same thing. But my elbow and wrist can get itself more in the fetal out here. And back here. And out here, it's relative to the joint. My left knee just got more in the fetal position, even though other things didn't. That's OK. That's why this is left knee flexion. It got more in a fetal position. Left knee extension, it got further away from fetal. Flexion and extension isn't about getting further or closer to weight to anatomical. Flexion and extension. Guys, please write this down. Or rewatch the video at 39.02. Flexion and extension isn't about getting further or closer away to anatomical. Flexion and extension is about getting closer to or further away from fetal. And I'll show you how. Few examples how? Absolutely. How? I'll show you how. It was the accent. Flexion and extension isn't about getting further away or closer to anatomical. Flexion and extension is getting is all about getting further away or closer to fetal. So watch, here's a, a couple examples. My wrist. This is extension of my wrist 
from, starting from, anatomical. I got further away from fetal. Okay? This is flexion from anatomical. So what I mean is both of these got away from anatomical. But one got me closer to fetal, one got me further away from fetal. This flexion went to anatomical. But it got me closer to fetal, because I'm closer to a ball. This extension went to anatomical, but I got further away from fetal. So I had extension to anatomical and flexion to anatomical. So it has nothing to do with going to or away from anatomical. Extension to, extension from. I'm furthest away from fetal position, way out over here. Flexion to, flexion from. And I have a little, so glad we already did the fetal and my joints don't move like they used to. I have a little example that I want to show you. This is around this one right here. So most textbooks, or that's why I kind of customize my own, most textbooks will just have flexion and extension. But what do we not have? We don't have context. We don't have context. So flexion, okay? Start here to there. That's true. I'm not saying they're not true at all, but you know what else is flexion? From here to there. You never see that. Exactly. Extension. They're 100% true. But you know what you never see? Extension. Extension to home. Extension from home. Flexion to. Flexion from. So what I try to do is, in my own like really awful part way, is try to bring that point home into one little graph. I get a context. I fill in the missing holes. Extension to, extension from, flexion to, flexion from. And one of the most important parts that I'm going to teach you in this class is where are you at is just as important as where are you going. Because where are you at helps me get you to where you need to go. You even said it. Um, you're trying to give someone directions to your tailgate, and they're lost. The first thing you get asked is, where are you at? What's around you? What do you see? What's your GPS? Where are you at is super important. Where are you at doesn't mean where are you going. Where are you at gives you reference so that you know how to explain where to go. So the difference between a flexed position, where is the joint at relative to anatomical? And a joint motion, flexion, extension, where is it going? It messes with people, but it doesn't mess with the people that study and practice. You can be extended, but yet be flexing. That's okay. I could be north of Lafayette, but be traveling south on 49. That's okay. I could be flexed and be extending. That's okay. I could be east of Lafayette but be traveling west. That's okay. Any questions? Practice, gentlemen and ladies. Practice, practice, practice. That's what all this is, the difference between motion and position. Okay. No questions? If you don't have any questions, I'm going to pretend that I'm just a really good teacher. And I taught you guys really good. All right? Y'all have a good rest of your day. We'll see you on Wednesday.